Alright guys, welcome to your next tutorial. So as I said, this video where we're getting to the real power of these. So if we go into our layout, we'll close off examples, you'll notice that the padding here is referring to these dimensions, vertical activity, vertical margin, at dimension. Now you're probably wondering, what the devil are those about? Well, essentially, those paddings are actually referring to a dimension file. So here you see it says at dimen activity vertical margin. And we can find those go into our values, dimensions. So look at dimension activity vertical margin 16 dips. So that's the padding for the layout, the inner padding. If we look at the one for a seven inch tablet, so as, you, as we know, a smallest width 600 dips is for seven inches dimensions there's no there's no actual dimensions in there but if we look at the 10 inch tablet dimensions horizontal activity margin 128 dips so that's if you look at the difference here between these two devices you can see that the horizontal margin has a big padding here horizontally and here it's a small one so that's really cool the way you can do that um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to change this to just padding and delete the rest there's no need to refer to anything like that. So we're going to do something similar with this here. We're going to say Android text size equals at. Now, uh, we need to actually create the example first. So examples, we're going to create our new uh, thing. We're going to have a dimension name equals text size text size and we're going to say for this will be for a phone because it's in the standard example so this applies to all devices unless otherwise qualified uh, we'll say 20 SP okay now you can mix and match dimensions like this I'd recommend separating them but we're just going to say that so we're going to say at dimen slash and text size Whoops. So as you'll notice, right, I'm just going to copy and paste this dimension to other uh, devices. So in here, we're going to put in our, we're going to make it on the Nexus 7, we're going to make it 25 SPs. And in the major one, as you can see, we've got three example files open. This can get a little bit hairy. Generally, uh, I'd normally put a comment in here saying, you know, um, We'll do that now. You know, comment, uh, you know, resource res for ten-inch tablet land. Just to remind me. Now, part of this is thirty SP. Now, obviously, that's just that. Okay. So if you run this again, the text sizes will be different. Now it's a lot harder to see this because naturally enough, um. Now, project contains errors apparently. Oh, great. Ah, we can't use text size for uh, Java name. Whoops. We'll just replace it with underscores. Because Java. Now, unfortunately, look, this is actually giving us an error here. No resource found. So it's gone through the uh, SDK or the, the ADT, sorry, the Android Developer Toolkit. It's gone through and checked everything. So if we just do this. Whoops, a daisy. Double quoting everything. Go through all our files and change those. Now you probably think this is an awful lot of effort, but the, I'll show you what the real power of this is now in a minute. Something you might not have seen. So we'll run this on the uh, S4 and the Nexus and the Net 10 inch. So as you can see, the uh, text is a lot bigger on this. In comparison to like the it's about the same size the action bar text this one here it's a lot bigger so that's cool now you've probably noticed this already but we are using the one layout file for everything 
Now, in normally how I'd have done this, but without using these resource qualifiers, the only way to do that would be to either detect the screen size in the activity and set it programmatically, which is a hassle, or to create multiple, like a layout, three different layout files, and you have to change it on all each one. But let's say, oh God, I want to change the text file for 10 inch tablet to go rummaging. Here, you just go into your values, change it, and it just works. It's very, very easy. But there's some really cool stuff you can do. Like, let's say, for example, um, I wanted to change the ID of the text view. Now, normally how I do this is if you have different layouts, you have to change it on all three. But otherwise, all the properties for this text view remain the same, which is really nice. <coughs> um, that's really cool. But one of the most powerful ways of doing this, and I use this myself in the current application, is with tablets and... Uh, tablet and phone versions of layouts you can use this to qualify you can if let's say you have a layout that you want to make more suitable for tablets you can increase your padding and your text sizes to make it look better on a nexus 7 and take advantage of the bigger screen or a nexus 10 or you can uh, you know change it so that it looks a bit smaller on the phone you can do some really cool stuff with these resource qualifiers and the resource qualifiers are endless like one of them is a integer on its own not integer array what the hell you can have integers and refer to them as at integer. Now, why the reason integer is so powerful is, and this is simply here, I show you right now. If you have a grid view, let's see, has it loaded? Nope. Okay. Like so. You can say Android columns. Oh, hang on a minute, I need. This is it. Columns equals integer slash column count. Now This obviously I'm just showing you this now imagine this a grid view is a list view in Android so let's say you have different integers that means you can use the one grid view layer and you can actually have it set so that if it's on a like, um, landscape or if it's on a phone you can have a single column grid view which essentially is a list view and then on a phone on a tablet let's say a Nexus 7 you can have it appear as a two column layout which is really cool what you can do with this kind of thing um, these resource qualifiers allow you to you know, change the text, change integers. In fact, we'll do the integer. Okay. Name equals, um, you know, integer. And we'll just say 10 for the phone one. And then we'll copy and paste this and put it in the different files. Actually, that's the, ta the seven inch, tab 10 inch tablet. So in here, we want to say, you know, eight, And then in the standard one, we'll just say five. So you can do these like really cool things of, uh, we'll just say int number num equals this dot get resources dot get integer or dot integer dot integer. And we'll simply, uh, we'll actually, you know what we'll do? integer equals and then plus num and then if we run this on a seven inch on this s4 as you can see for device on fallback integer equals five next to seven device on fallback integer equals eight so it automatically selects which one is most suitable at the time uh, you can do this also to have styles, so you can actually have the text appear differently on different devices, which is really neat. Um, it's also very cool for be able to do these references with list views, for example, or images. Let's say you want the image to take up the full width of the screen, you know, match parent. But let's say you want it to be smaller or only like 100 dips wide on a tablet, for example, for some weird reason, if you wanted to do that. 
you could actually just reference the image view you know, layer width layer height could be at dimension uh, you know at row height or something like that and then have a dimension in here you could say match parent or whatever it allows you to have one layout file which you know oh god I need to change oh, I need to reorganize this layout file you reorganize it reference your values and it makes things much smoother and much much more streamlined and that's some of the real power of resource selectors in Android um, there's all kinds of mental selectors if we make a new Android XML file we just call it just nothing the qualifiers are mental you can have whether a device has a touchscreen a hardware keyboard text input dimensions versions of Android the size now guys do not this has been depreciated do not use x large you know small large x large for your screen sizes because some devices don't have those set up properly always use the dips like smallest with 600 720 dips whatever country code network code language region so you can have a us version of an app apply different string arrays for example for listing out cities so let's say you have a cities of uh you know like European cities or major cities in your country you can actually have this as a, as a string array call that array and print it out in your uh, activity or in a list view or something like that and then you can actually have in the US have it select different city different string arrays so you can have different cities for example show up language is really cool so if we go into strings these are our default strings if I translate these and I create values um f or for french or G i think gn is german maybe i don't know maybe it's g or but let's say your know, values dash f or for french and i french version these strings when a person on a french device turns on their device it's going to come up with the french version and that is really powerful you can use this to detect actually what version of the device you're using so you can actually have um different things you can store booleans in here and everything there's some truly cool things you can do with these because it's all on different devices uh, going back into the qualifiers so new Android XML file next uh, region layout direction or smallest screen width screen width screen height size ratio ratio is cool because ratio allows you to tell uh, if the device is square or if the device is you know the ratio like you know smallest ratio so the device is 69 or 43 not really much uses for that navigation state you can do all these cool things navigation method so you can do really neat things with this whole thing it's it's really cool and these are incredibly powerful tools that you should be using all the time you can also do something called referencing i'll cover that maybe in the next episode but anyway guys as always it's been a good talk and see us out there